What do you picture when you think of your dream job? Maybe you get excited about working with people, being in an office environment, making sales or giving presentations, or maybe that's not for you. Maybe your mind goes somewhere else and you dream of doing research below the granite face of Half Dome in Yosemite National Park, or guiding horseback tours through the heart of California, or navigating the rapids of the Colorado River. If that sounds like you, we've got five jobs that are perfect for people who love the great outdoors. For each of these five people, the great outdoors came calling at some point in their lives. Let's dive into how and why they ultimately decided to answer the call and build a career working outdoors. I'm the chief field engineer here at the Haunt Volcano Observatory. We have about 240 remote sites on just Hawaii Island. 90% of our network you can only get to by helicopter. So I got here is kind of like a roundabout way. I took this class called Rocks and Rolls. Of course, when I signed up for it, I was seeing, oh yeah, rock and roll, cool. <laughs> you know, it's just my own fault for not reading this. But turns out Rocks and Rolls was a geology program. I came here and for the first time, I was exposed to this profession of natural science. I fell in love with it. The first time I saw molten rock flowing and got to scoop it and do that kind of work, I was, I was just hooked. The way I got into the river community, somebody invited me on a trip. Somebody invited me on a trip, and I said, oh, I don't know if I should do it, it's in the middle of school, but that deep down inside, you get that gut feeling like, I'm not sure if I should do this, but something's telling you, go for it. I didn't realize it until someone said, you know, I think you're the first Navajo woman, or, and Native American to get a river guide license. It's a huge deal to me to be in this community that there's still a lot of racism for me to succeed in that world. It was huge. If you've ever been on white water in a rapid, there's only one way through, it's down. I've broken my oar, it's flipped my boat several times, but I've made it out okay. That is my analogy for life. Just, just go do it. I own Trell Brothers uh, LLC, and we are a ranch that does horse recreational stuff like trail rides, kids camps, uh, horse therapy. I do pack trips out in the wilderness. I don't think that you need to have everything figured out, but know where you like where you want to end up, and just always go towards that, and and be stubborn towards that end goal. That's what I did. I had an idea to put horses and and my skills I learned in the military together and I tried to find a way to make money doing what I loved, hanging out with these guys. <laughs> if I had all the money in the world, this is what I would be doing. I mean, this is, it's a dream come true for me. I came on a road trip to Yosemite, it was really randomly, and I fell in love with it. I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you arrive somewhere and the minute you step foot in that place, you just get this feeling in your heart or your gut where you're like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. There's a, a quote about, you know, we have not inherited the earth from our ancestors, we have borrowed it from our children. And I think to live in harmony with our surroundings, kids need to have outdoor ed. Soon after I started teaching, maybe a month or two, I knew that I wanted to teach for the rest of my life. I just fell in love with it. I think the biggest piece is find something that you love to do, even if it's not what your parents want you to do. Those times are really, really hard, but they're the times where you're going to grow and learn the most too, you know. So like, let that, let that uncertainty be okay. This was a summer job for me initially. I had no clue what I wanted to do. Couldn't really just grasp the whole like get a job, be on your own thing. Um, and the Park Service offered me a full-time position in Baltimore, Maryland. And that turns into 15 years <laughs> of working for the Park Service. So I came here to Grand Canyon four years ago and um, it's kind of been a, it's been a great roller coaster of Park Service. You know, we always want to make sure that people understand that these are their parks. These are places where anyone can come. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what your background is, it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. A park is a public place and it's open to anyone to come and hopefully find some inspiration and, and make a connection with so that they can continue to come back to these places. 
Feeling totally inspired but stuck inside right now? Make sure to watch our top 10 must-see road trip stops to take a virtual road trip with us and check out some of the most beautiful natural wonders across the U.S. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe.